what is going on with you? You seem, I don't know what, the, I can't find the word. I think I'm angry. Angry? Yeah, I'm an angry person, which people don't get from TV. I seem very friendly, but that's just a mask that I put on. Well, many people have taken their anger and turned that anger into good things. I can't think of an example. Uh, Mother Teresa, huh. she just used her anger and, and sort of came up with this whole, I should be a saint thing. Well, It is constructive, I think. I use the anger for good things. I'm just trying to find the source of the anger. The anger that you're describing, Conan, it seems to me that your relationships with women in particular are often the victim of that anger. Yeah, and uh, I think a lot of it has to do with my situation growing up. Well, please, let's not open that can of worms. What? I'm sorry, that was just a joke. See, I believe in injecting a little levity into therapy. Uh, sure, yeah, I guess. I call it therapy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. It's not, not a big joke, it's just a little thing. No, that's, you know, that's not bad. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't realize this was a comedy house. Is that what you call it? A you know, if I could stop, I would. I apologize. Well, you're a machine. It's like asking the Terminator not to kill. Thank you for noticing. You know, I would like to feel that at least one of us is taking me seriously, and my preference there would be you. I do take you seriously. Seriously. Well, that that's good. I'm counting. You're eight for eight so far. Thank you. Do you feel like you're in the zone right now? Like every... Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Is there a drink minimum in here? Ladies and gentlemen, we got a terrific show for you uh, today. We got a lot of fun stuff planned. To be frank, though, I'm feeling a little strange. I'm in kind of a weird mood. I saw my therapist today, and I, I started talking to him about my childhood. And he said, "Please, let's not open that can of worms." <laughs> Huh. Oh, that's pretty good. <laughs> Therapist, that's excellent. Oh, I like that. How come you don't tell jokes like that? That's uh, I'm I'm working on it. Oh my goodness. Well, you actually thought it was funny. What part did you like? What part? The funny part. Yeah, I can't really dissect. So you obviously didn't think it was funny. I do think it's funny, but it's also quite brilliant. Do you think? Huh. Yeah. You know, like all good jokes, it sort of cuts to the issue. Uh huh. Right. Hey, Julie, is he sounding like weird to you? Just a. Well, yeah. Is this better? <laughs> So I'm talking to uh, Stanley and Julie, and the TV's on in the background. Sure enough, there is Conan O'Brien doing a joke that I made in session with him. Really? Verbatim. So he did a joke you told to him in the session? Yeah. How come you were telling jokes to people? And... That's a whole other issue. Are you sure you're not mistaken that maybe he just did the setup and... No, Ben... I, I think you should be happy. Well, if I was a professional joke writer and I had submitted the joke to him, I'd be happy. Oh, you want to get paid. It's not the money. It's a recognition because besides you, I can't tell anybody. And I want to tell everybody. And, you know, I'll tell you, society has gotten to a point where you can't just tell a joke and just be friendly about it. Everything has to be bought and sold. You cannot copyright a joke, but once he does it on national television, I can't do it in therapy with anyone else. Do you repeat material you use to other patients? Well, uh, certain phrases come up like, let's explore that. Right. You know, but that's not so funny. Not funny at all. No. Hey, Dad, what if you were um, Columbus's therapist? Oh, let's explore that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's funny. You could take that joke. I don't care. It's yours. Let's just enjoy. Freud said the joke is a death of an emotion. Could have been his delivery. <laughs> He's telling my joke on national TV, and it works. Really? You must have been so happy. No, actually, I wasn't. I was, I was a little hurt that he would use something that I said to him in confidence as fodder for his comedy. Yeah, but he pays you for the session. Doesn't he essentially buy the rights to all the material? Hmm, that's an interesting point. I mean, you should be happy that one of your jokes actually made it onto the show. Yeah, but I didn't get proper credit for it, Laura. Well, what's he going to do, stop and say, by the way, that joke was written by my therapist? Would it kill him? <sighs> they could have had a Chiron, you know, under him on the screen. Joke written by Dr. Casper. <laughs> Hi, this is Conan. I'm not in right now. Leave a message and I'll get back to you. Conan, I'm sorry I missed you. I was hoping you and I could talk a little bit about what happened last night. Not a big deal, but I will leave you a message. I'll try to get to the point. I will say as a disclaimer, I've been known for taking a while to get to the point. I think, in fact, that's one of my nicknames. 
taking a while to get to the point. Cats. That's what they call me over the long wind at the center. Anyway, I was flattered if the joke worked, but I just would like to feel that what you say to me in the privacy of my office is not just fodder for your, uh, or fuel for your fodder. Is that an expression? How is your father? Oh, my God. You're still talking to me? Um, listen, so call me back when you... Leave a message, and I'll get back to you. Conan, I'm sorry I, this has gone on so long. And if you want to call me back, you can try me at the office, leave a message. If I get the message, I'll call you back from my cell phone. Hey, am I the only American with a rotary cell phone? Hey, if I could stop, I would. Well, yeah, I, I did hear from him. I, I'm in my car this morning, and the phone rings, and the doctor says your test came back, and then the phone goes dead. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, am I the only guy in America with a rotary cell phone? <laughs> <laughs> ben, did you hear what he just said? What's that? Hold on, Ben. Does anyone else have one? Because we could call each other. <laughs> oh, man. He just said, am I the only guy in America with a rotary cell phone? I left that on his answering machine. Right, right, Dad. I, uh, yeah, today. Sure he did. Yeah, about four hours ago I did. Yeah, so did I. I'm just saying, Ben, this is getting a little bit... Uh... Dad, I'm trying to watch the show here. Well, now I miss the rest of the monologue. Why don't you look at me and just go right to the source? You think he did another one of your jokes? I know he did. Dad, this is becoming like an obsession, and it's bad. Really? Hey, Dad, why were you leaving a joke on this guy's answering machine? Y you know, because I like to kid around, Ben. Well, Dad, you were the one who complained that he stole one of your jokes to begin with. Yeah, And but... you go back and call him and tell him more jokes? Yes. Did you write that rotary phone joke yourself, or did you come up with it? Of course that's my joke. I made that up. I'm just saying that's not a funny... If you're going to write jokes, there has to be a twist. That's the whole point of a joke. Right. Take, for instance, this joke. Mm -hmm. Hey, does um, the grocery store have to put out rotten vegetables? Is that a requirement? That's funny. I, I don't want fresh. That's not why I came to the store. So I'm pointing my finger at the manager. Where are the rotten vegetables? You know what I'm saying? And then you can continue and sort of riff. Give me another example, Ben, because I'm, I'm not sure I, that one works for me. Okay. Hey, uh, when I go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and I want a carton of eggs, mm -hmm. the half of them have to be broken and rotten? So it's like the one with the fruit. Yes, but a different food group. So, in other words, you mine the real world for comedy. That's right, and that's where the real comedy comes from, is the real yeah. world, not this rotary cell phone bullshit. Well, or you could say, like, okay. I went to the grocery store. Right. Express lane? I don't think so. <laughs> How is this express? Because I'm waiting. Hello? Then I'd bring probably the manager character back. That's called a callback, yeah. and then I would say, here are your rotten eggs, sir. How about this? I went to the grocery store, and they had an express yourself lane. Oh, that's not bad, Dad. So I talked a little bit about growing up in New York, got some groceries, and uh, went to the checkout lane. Okay, so I lost you. <laughs> the joke was funny, but then you sort of half-assed the tag. Okay. But whatever. I mean, that's your style. Here, this is better. One of those animal shows. Are they stealing anything from you? That's my fur. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Conan, the whole notion of doctor-patient confidentiality is so that we both can feel a sense of safety in this environment. You're absolutely right. I, I had no idea that I was doing that. I appreciate the apology, but I think that there's a reason you did that. Very much like the kleptomaniac who steals. It's not about him wanting to have... I didn't steal anything. That change was on the couch, and I just... It's anybody's change, isn't it? Well, finders keepers loses weepers is a very immature approach to anything. Well, it, it rhymes, though. And anything that rhymes has a sort of hidden truth, I think. Yeah. Believe me, I don't think there's any real underlying issue here. I think it's just something that happened once. That's all. Twice. And it won't happen again. But man, <laughs> I was listening to the answering machine. You were working it. Sweat was coming through the phone. Con, really what I was doing was I was, I just wanted to make sure that I made my point and that I did it in a way that was entertaining. Because I saved the tape. I've been playing it for people at work. And how did I do? You know what? It starts out okay. Mm -hmm. And then it, I'll be honest with you, it gets ugly. 